Uh, today we are going to learn about the image segmentations. So actually before this course you have learned about the image restoration and also you have uh, uh, learned about the image filtering in spatial and also in, in frequency domain. And today we are going to uh, learn about the image segmentations. And the contents of our course today, we will learn about the what is image segmentations and why do we need image segmentations in this group. And also we are well because we will learn about uh, some some algorithm for image segmentations. And number four, region-based segmentations, edge de detection segmentation, and segmentation based on clustering. Okay, what is image segmentations? As you can see right here, uh, if we are human, so we we we, we, we are human, so we will uh, can describe what the object of this image. So we can say that this is a human. This is a kid, this is a human, this is a car, this is a pilot, this is a street, right? So how do a computer can do that? So image segmentation will let computer to detect an object or describe uh, every object in an image. Okay. So why do we need image segmentations? As you can see right here, this is the image of cancer cell. Okay. Cancer has long been a deadly illness. Even in this age of technological advancements, cancer can be fatal if we don't identify it at an early stage. Detecting cancer cells as quickly as possible can potentially save millions of lives. So, image segmentation can be very useful for the uh, detect the cancer cell by yeah by segment the every object in the image. So we can we will uh, the computer will see that we will separate every object with the background so yeah the background is black and the cancer cell is a gray like this the shape of the cancer cells plays a vital role in determining the severity of the cancer so the the shape of the cancer cell is a very uh vital role has a place a vital role for determining the severity of the cancer right you might have put the piece together object detection will not be very useful here so we will uh, talk about the differences between the object detection and image segmentations after this and we will only generate uh, we will only generate bonding box which will not help us in identifying the shape of the cells so when we use the object detections we will only generate bonding box which will not help us in identifying the shape of the cells so we will use the image segmentations for determining the severity of the cancer uh, for the yeah for the cancer detections why do we need image segmentation there are many other applications where image segmentation is transforming industries like uh, traffic control systems and self-driving cars and locating object in satellite images so there are a lot of uh, there are a lot of application that we can use or by using the image segmentations and we will talk it uh, later we will um, uh, i will give you an example of the image segmentation case study after this and how does image segmentation work as you can see right here this is an object detection and this one is instant segmentations so when we are talking in instant segmentation we will working on the pixel values of the image so for example we have a dot object right here right so for example when we are using the instant segmentations so instant segmentation is image segmentations we will see that yeah we will give the red value of the dot of the dot object like this one so when we are working in the object detection it just give the boundary box of every object of it so yeah for example the first dot for the instant segmentation i will give the red value red pixel value of the first dot and for the second dot i will give the green value and for the a cat i will give the blue value of this of this object so we will uh, use the instant segmentation or image segmentation for separating every object with the with the background of this image right 
object detection built a bounding box corresponding to each class in the image, but it tells us nothing about the shape of the object. So if we are using the object detection, we will not, uh, we will not, we will not can the uh, the object detection will not tell us the the uh, I'm sorry the We only get the set of bonding box. We want to, if we want to get more information, this is to fake you for our purposes. So we will not see. We will uh, if we are using the object detection, it will not tell us about the shape of the object, right? But when we are using the instant segmentations, we will see our computer will our computer will tell us about the shape of the object, right? Image segmentation creates a pixel wise mass for each object in the image this technique gives us a far far more granular understanding of the object in the image right the different types of image segmentations as you can see right here there are two images right here the image one is just yeah it's just separating the person with the background right so yeah we can use uh, two type of the image segmentations we will talk it la later about the the first image image one we we just only see that there are a person and there are a, a background right but in image two we will see that we will uh, separate every person in this image not only all of person but every person we will give the uh, pixel values uh, for example person one i will give a red values person two i will give the uh, green values and etc in image one, every pixel belongs to a particular class, either background or person. So if we use image one, we just separating the object with the background, right? But in image two, we're not only separating the object with their background, but on, but also we will separating every object of this image. So yeah, uh, we, we will we will uh, use uh, two different types of the image segmentation. You will know after this. And region-based segmentation, one simple way to segment different objects could be to use their pixel values. Yeah, because we are working in digital image processing, we can uh, use the pixel values for the image segmentations. An important point to note, the pixel values will be different for the object and the image background if there is a sharp contrast between them. So if there is a sharp contrast between them, as you can see like here, uh, when we see in the first image, yeah, there are a sharp uh, contrast between the uh, the sky and the uh, and the mountain, right? So as you can see right here, there are sharp differences between the mountain and the skies. So we will work uh, on the pixel values in the mountain and also the sky. If there is a sharp contrast between them, we can separate these two objects. In this case, we can set a threshold value. The pixel values falling below or above the threshold can be classified accordingly as an object or a background. This technique is known as threshold segmentation. Uh, I have actually I remember that I have told you about the thresholding, thresholding technique, right? Thresholding mean techniques. We can separate the the two object by yeah binary values. Uh, zero or one. If zero, the the pixel will be a uh, black. If one, the pixel will be a uh, white. Right. Uh, I remember that I have told you in the week four. Right. Do you remember? When, if you remember, I give you the the image of the the person that take a picture with the camera. Right. Do you remember it? Then, when we are using the thresholding. We can just separating the object of a human with the with their background, right? Okay, we will uh, we will uh, review it after this. Okay, let's code. Let's implement what we have learned in these sections. Download this image and run the below code. It will give you a better understanding of how thresholding works. You can use any image of your choice if you feel like experimenting. So wait. I will open my Google Collaboratory. Uh, 
Oke, okay. you need to download this image. I will give you my uh, link. Uh, actually, you can use our your own image, but if you are interesting to work on this image, like in my slide, you can uh, download this this image. I will give you the link. Uh, maybe uh, any question? Until this section, no, you know the yeah. image segmentation, right? Just separating every object in an image, right? So that's what what that's what the image segmentation work. Just separating every object in an image, okay? Any question, maybe? No, no not yet. Okay, so let's code. So you can open your Google Collaborate right now. And you can just typing my code first. I will uh, I will explain to you line by line of my code. So yeah, you can just start uh, importing some stuff here, like scikit image, numpy, cv2. Okay, we will use the cv open cv library and matplotlib and skypy. Yeah, you can just uh, start code in your computer, open your Google Collaboratory, and I will share, share my image. I will use bitly for sorting my link. Use the IM show for from the scikit image. We will use the IM show from the matplotlib. So it's just same. We can on we can also use the open CV for IM so but yeah you can experimenting by yourself. Okay, you can uh, download this image by using this link. Sorry, I will give you the link. Bitly slash images one PCD. Okay, you can download the image from this link and open the image. So yeah, so let's just yeah use the color image from this code. From this image. Okay, have you finished? Okay, sir. Not yet. If you have any questions, you can ask to me. If you have any problem with with the code, you can ask to me. Okay, have you finished? Can you open this link? Sorry, can you open this link? Yes, sir. Okay, you need to put this image into your Google Drive directory. As usual, after that, uh, you need to uh, read the image from this directory. And image.zip is just for, I want to know the shape of this image. 
the x and y shape of this image maybe I just print this one for to know the dimension of this image okay Sakai Pi and and the image I will talk it later after this you will use this library for convolution okay after this I will uh, explain that and matplotlib cv2 numpy and scikit image have you finished? maybe I want to know your Bernatus Holy have you finished? to uh, type this code not yet sir not yet? this one though have you finished? Larry, any problem? No, sir. No? Indra, have you finished to open the, the image? Maybe I want to see your screen, Indra. Can you share your screen right now? I want to know that you have implement my code. Have you finished or not? Not yet. If you have any problem, if you uh, have not finished, you can uh, tell me because we have limited time. So I, I, I need the uh, I ask you to type this code quickly so we can just move on to the next uh, next slide finish right it just as uh, displaying the image right so we can just skip it or maybe any problem okay okay I will wait you normal asari have you any problem do you have any problem have you finished uh, this code can you hear me hello uh, I don't know what are you doing right now so maybe you can just you can just uh, share your camera so I, I want to know your your face right so I just want to make sure that you are uh, really really attending my my course right okay you can just yeah share your your camera so I can see oh micnya gak bisa dinyalain okay okay yeah, you can just share your camera, so I just want to know that you are really attend my class. I don't know what are you doing right now. So I will absent you one by one by sharing your camera, right? So I just want to make sure that you are attend to my class. For our next, our next course, you need to share your camera. For yeah, just I want just to make sure that you attend my class. Okay.
Okay. Okay, have you finished? Yes, sir. Finished, yeah? Right. So, yeah, as you can see right here, the dimension of this image is 192, 263, and 3. So, as you can see, this is the color image. So, we have three layers for red, green, and blue. So, we have three layers of each pixel, right? Okay, let's move on to the next slide. Uh, next slide, yeah. It is a three channel image, red, green, blue. We need to convert it into grayscale. So we will uh, change this image to the grayscale so that we only have a single channel. Doing this will also help us get a better understanding of how the algorithm works. So for now, we still working on a grayscale image. And so actually after this, we also uh, segment the image in a color image, but for this, uh, for this one, we still using the uh, grayscale image, so you just need to convert the uh, color image to the grayscale image by using this code, this method RGB to gray image. Then I want to see the shape of the grayscale image, the dimension of the grayscale image. Then you need to show the grayscale image, like this one, right? So yeah, the height and the width of the image is 192 and 263, respectively. We will take the mean of the pixel values and use that as a threshold, right? So we will uh, we will get the mean value of pixel of this image. If the pixel value is more than our threshold, we can say that it belongs to an object. If the pixel value is less than the threshold, it will be treated as the background. Okay? So after you showing the grayscale image, we will separating the object and the background by using the threshold mean, right? So if uh, first of all we will get we will calculate the mean of this pixel values, right? 0 to 255 so every every pixel of this image we will uh, sum of all of the pixel of this image and dividing by the dimension of this image right so we'll get the main value of the of the pixel image right so we'll get the pixel values the main pixel values of this image right so uh, how to do that you will see after this so actually, I will make sure that you have a uh, code. This you have uh, type this code. Have you finished? Just yeah. Uh, converting the the image. The image is the color image, right? That I get from my previous code. Then you need to yeah. You need to just printing the dimension of this image. Then after that. You need to show the image of, of your grayscale image. Okay, any problem or any question? No. Ricardo, not? can you hear me? Any problem with you? No? Okay, no. If you have any problem with your microphone, you can just uh, send a message to this Google, hang Google Meet. Okay, I think there is no problem with this one. So we will move on to the next code. And this one is for, yeah, I will uh, explain you line by line of my code. So gray underscore R is the is for reshaping the this image, right? So we need to uh, reshaping this image into one dimension, right? It's uh, yeah, it's similar with the with the uh, Raphael with the Raphael Raphael method, right? But we will not use it. We just uh, reshaping this image by using the reshape method. So actually, if we have one hundred 92 
times 263 like this one I will yeah I will calculate the dimensions of this image we have 192 192 and 263 for this image right so if we reshaping this image we will get the like this one 192 times 256 right 250 uh, I'm sorry 263 times 263 so we will get a one dimensional array with the 50,496 uh, 50, right so we will uh, convert the gray image into one dimension so you can use the receipt method right so we can uh, after that we print the mean pixel values of this image by using the Gray underscore r dot means so we will get the mean value of this image to yeah because after after I'm sorry uh, actually the gray underscore r is in the zero to one okay not one to two hundred fifty five but zero to one one means one means uh white and zero means black right. So the mean value of this image, the pixel values of this image is uh, 0.537, right? Then after that, we need to uh, looping for for describing that if the pixel values is more than the mean value of the pixel, so we will give the value as a one, and if the pixel values is below the the mean value of this pixel so we'll set the image the pixel as a zero right after that we will turn the dimension into two dimension again by using this code gray equal gray underscore r to receive create a chip zero create a chip one so we will change the one dimensional array to two dimensional array again so then after that uh, we we will showing the uh, image right so as you can see you will see the image will be like this one right so we just give the value of each pixel if the pixel is the the value uh, pixel values is more than the the mean value of that pixel of that image so we will give the value of that pixel as a one and if the pixel values is below the mean values we will set the pixel values is uh, as a zero right okay you need to uh, type this code first then if you have any questions or any problem you can ask to me yeah just transforming this uh, image into a binary image right that consists of one and zero values of each pixel okay you can just code type my code then if you have any problem you can ask me Actually, you can just uh, use the threshold underscore min, right? The method threshold underscore min from the scikit image for transforming the the grayscale values, grayscale image to the binary image, right? But uh, yeah, for now, uh, we will not use that that threshold underscore min method. We will uh, type, uh, we will uh, code from scratch. Yeah, maybe any question? 
So wait. Ilham mau scroll halaman sebelumnya. Belum tak tadi ya? Yang mana? Yang ini? Yang mana? Yang ini tak ya? Sudah, ini sudah berarti ya. Kalau sudah saya move ke next ya. Kalau sudah, sudah ini. Oke. Okay. If you have uh, found any error, you can just share your screen. So I will see your code. Ilham yang ini tak, yang ini ya. Iya pak. Sudah atau belum? Iya sudah pak. Oke sudah kalau sudah saya geser ke bawah. Indra, you find any error? Apa? Errornya apa? Yang di else-nya pak. Hah? Else. Else-nya else masih itu. Iya. Yeah. Bentar. Ini oke. Okay. Uh, nunggu temanmu selesai coding dulu ya, biar nanti kan nggak bisa sharing <coughs> dua kan ya. Oh, oke. Okay. Ya kamu lanjutkan dulu coba dicek apa yang salah mungkin ada yang terlewat. Lagi cek lagi pak. Mm -hmm. Oke, okay, we finish. Sudah selesai semua. Yang belum siapa? Coba angkat tangan. Not yet, sir. Not yet. Bernadus belum. Kezen sudah. Kezen <coughs> belum. Normal asal belum. Oke. Okay. Yang belum. Okay, I will wait. If you have any error, you can uh, just yeah uh, tell me.
Any question about my code? Yeah, it's just we get the mean value of 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 the pixel of this image of the grayscale image, right? So after we get the mean value of this grayscale image, the, the mean value of the pixel of this grayscale image, then we will set that if any pixel, so we, we, we if any pixel that uh, more than the mean values from this uh, grayscale image, we will set it as a one, and else we will set it as a zero. Then we will reshape it again into two dimensional array. Then we will showing the image, right? So we will not, we will not, uh, we cannot showing the image with the one dimensional value, right? So one dimensional array. I'm sorry. So we will set it to the two dimensional array again. So we will get the result of after the image uh, after the segmentation, as you can see right here. So yeah, maybe it's not uh, really accurate, right? So the the black, uh, the black actually we will we want to get the the uh, mountain only the mountain, but uh, the the sky also have a, a a dark pixel, right? So so if we just uh, use a two two values, zero or one, it's not really accurate, right? So I will I will explain you later after this. We will set a more than one values of each pixel, so we, we really we can really get the accurate and the better accurate the better accuracy after this. Okay. So if you, okay, I, I'm sorry. I will, I will uh, share my code after the course. But I uh, really appreciate that you uh, code my uh, code by yourself, right? So actually, if you code by yourself, you can uh, you get a sense of yeah Python code. If you uh, type uh, by your, uh, if you type the code by yourself, you can know line by line, right? You 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 really. Uh, read the line, uh, the line by line of my code, so it's really useful for you. Okay. Have you finished? Sudah. Kok ada yang baru join ini yang dia? Have you finished? Any problem? Sudah selesai semua? Finish? Done, sir. Done. Yes. Okay. Uh, any problem with your code? No, right? So if you have, uh, if you don't have any problem, we will move on to the next, uh, next step. Okay. Nice. The dark region black represent the background, and the brighter white region is a foreground. We can define multiple thresholds as well to detect multiple objects. <clears throat> there are four different segments in the above image. You can set a different threshold values and check how the segments are made. Some of the advantages of this method are calculation are simpler because we only use the mean values of the pixels. So the calculation will be uh, simple. Uh, fast operation speed and when the object and background have high contrast. This method performs really well. So as you can see, if we see the image, there are yeah there are a big contrast between the mountain and also the sky, right? So it's very easy for our computer to uh, separate these two objects. But what will happen if we have uh, not a sharp contrast between them? So yeah, this method will not be accurate. So okay, 
we will uh, give uh, another another code right here so but there are some limitation of this approach when we don't have significant grayscale difference or there is an overlap of the grayscale pixel values it becomes very difficult to get accurate segments right so yeah luckily we have a very a good contrast between the object and the background right so right here we will uh, modify our our code so we will uh, separate into four four segment right so if the grayscale if the the pixel values is more than the mean so I we will give the pixel values as a tree then if we if the pixels is more than 1.5 then we will give the pixel as a 2 then if the pixels is more than 0 0.2 0 0.25 we will give the pixel into 1 and else we will give as a 0 so you need to add this code so as you can see like here we will give a better segmentation right because we have a four different values of the pixel right so you need to try this you need to try to adding some code right here not only one and zero but one and zero one two and three right so the pixel will be one two Oh, I'm sorry, 0, 1, 2, or 3, right? So you need to add this code, just modifying this code. Tinggal nambah ini saja kan ya? Tinggal nambah dua ini. So the maximum value of this pixel will be 3, and the uh, minimum value of this pixel is a 0. If the pixel is a 3, is a uh, white and if the pixel is zero is a uh, uh, black right and one and two is between a uh, black and white right it's it it can be a gray or black gray like this one right Okay, you can uh, modify your code. And don't worry if you uh, still don't understand about my explanation. I also uh, I will upload this video, this class after this, on YouTube, so you can just move. Uh, if you still don't understand about uh, my explanation, you can just uh, play back on YouTube. But I will upload it after this. Kenapa ada masalah dengan Angger ya? Gak bisa koneksinya. Oke nanti Angger silakan nanti nonton YouTube-nya saja kalau masih belum sempat masuk ke kelas ini nanti saya upload ya videonya di YouTube. Uh, siapa ini uh, Zain ke atas lagi? Sini ya. It's same with our previous code, but you just uh, 
uh, adding uh, four lines this and uh, this one just uh, adding this code then you change the value into 3 2 1 and 0 right Okay, have you finished? So, yeah, the three values of these pixels, it means the pixel will have a white values, two and one between black and white, and zero is a black, like, like this one. So, we can, uh, yeah, we can just uh, see this image because there are four types of values of this pixel. There are white, black, gray, right? Okay, finish. Sudah ya. Ada yang belum? Kalau yang belum silakan bilang di chat atau bilang saja. Sudah ya, sudah semua. Oke, okay. oke, okay, we have finished. We can move on to the next slide. Oke, okay. uh, we will move on to the uh, slide again. So it's different discussion, not only in the image segmentations. Oke, okay. detection segmentations. So, beside the image segmentations, we also learn about the edge detections. As you can see right here, if we have the image like this one, we can detect the edge of this person, right? Like this one. Or maybe in the, the, uh, the doors, in the table, we can just yeah detect the uh, edge, right? Actually, I also talk about the edge detections in our previous course in the week 4 actually in the spatial filtering you also learn about the Sobel and Laplace right Sobel and Laplace kernel actually the, the Sobel and Laplace kernel is useful for detecting the edge right what divides two objects in an image there is always an edge between two adjacent regions with different grayscale values or pixel values the edge can be considered as the discontinuous local features of an image and we can make use of this discontinuity to detect edges and hence define a boundary of the object this helps us in detecting the shapes of multiple objects present in a given image now the question is how can we detect these edges yeah as i was mentioning before we will use the i'm sorry we will use the kernel the Sopel and the Laplacian kernel. So when we when we use the kernel, we also use the uh, convolution, right? Do you remember about the convolutions? We have uh, two types for using the kernel for multiplying our image with the kernel. The first one is correlation and the second one is uh, convolution, right? Actually, we will use the convolution metric for multiplying our image with the kernel. So, as you can see right here, we have a kernel, the kernel one, we will multiplying our image with the kernel one by using the uh, convolution. So, convolution means we will, you know, uh, rotate the kernel 180 degrees so uh, for example this kernel negative 1 minus 1 minus 1 and 1 will be 
uh, 1 will be right here, 1 will be right here, and 0 will be right here, right? Then we will uh, doing a multiplication between this image and this chrono by using uh, a metric metric uh, multiplications, okay? Element wise multiplication, I'm sorry, I forgot. Element wise multiplication, we will uh, just uh, okay, the explanation will be right here. So, for example, as you can see in these animations, for, uh, we will start from this uh, three pixel values, uh, nine, nine pixel values from here, then we will shift it into the right until the end of this image, and this value will be uh, right here. Okay, so we will not discuss about these multiplications, we only use the Python library for doing that, so don't worry, you don't need to be confused about the element wise multiplications. So we will just uh, use the Python library. So here's the step uh, by step process of how this works. Okay, we will just uh, 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 skip these slides. So we'll use the Sobel and Laplacian operator for the kernel for the edge detections. As you can see right here, we have a three kernel, the first kernel and the second kernel and third kernel. The first kernel is the Sobel operator for detecting the the x, the x. Uh, I'm sorry, the horizontal lines, and for this one is for detecting the the uh, vertical lines, and for the Laplacian operator, we will use it for detecting not only for the horizontal lines but also the vertical lines so actually when we are using the uh, Laplacian operator we on uh, we we can detecting not only the the horizontal lines but also the vertical lines okay the the example you you will see on our on my code so this one is yeah so you need to download this image. So actually, uh, I have this image, right? So I will detect the horizontal lines and also the vertical lines. The vertical lines and also the horizontal lines. So how to do that? We will use the Sobel operator and Laplacian operator, right? So as you can see right here, this one is a kernel for detecting the uh, horizontal lines. This is the Sobel kernel and this also the Sobel kernel. I'm sorry, I forgot to put the Laplacian kernel inside this text cell, so don't worry, we will use it. So, I will share my images. So, wait. So, you need to download my image. I will share by using the pit light again. If you have any question, you can ask to me. Ada pertanyaan mungkin? Kalau ada pertanyaan, silakan ditanyakan. Ya, intinya adalah kita nanti akan mendeteksi ya horizontal line sama horizontal line sama vertical lines dari gambar ini. Ya kan, nanti kita pengen tahu horizontal line-nya itu mana saja, vertical line-nya itu mana saja, menggunakan kernelnya Sobel sama Laplacian. Kalau Sobel itu bisa kita gunakan satu persatu. Kalau Sobel bisa kita gunakan untuk mendeteksi yang vertical lines-nya saja ataupun horizontal lines-nya saja. Sedangkan yang uh, Laplacian, yang ini tadi, yang Laplacian itu bisa kita gunakan untuk mendeteksi dua-duanya secara sekaligus. Baik itu horizontal maupun vertikalnya. Seperti itu. Oke, nanti implementasinya akan kita lihat di sini. Oke, ini saya mau share dulu uh, gambarnya.
Okay, you can download this image by using this link. I'm um, sorry, not, not this one. Yeah. So this one is the link. Bitline slash images to PCD. You can download from this link. Oke, okay, sudah di-download. Have you downloaded it? Sudah ya? Have you finished? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, we will move on to the next code. So, yeah. It should be fairly simple for us to understand how the edges are detected in this image. So, we are human. We can, yeah, we can see that this line is very easy for us to detecting the horizontal lines and the vertical lines. So, how to computer do that? Let's convert it into grayscale and define the Sobel filter, both horizontal and vertical, that will be convolved over this image, right? So, you need to create a, a kernel manually. So, you need to create a kernel for the Sobel and also the, the Laplacian. But uh, for this code, I will, yeah, I will convert the image into the grayscale, RGB to gray. Then after this one, I I create the Sobel horizontal kernel manually by using the numpy numpy dot array one two one zero 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 minus one minus one and minus one minus two and minus one for the Sobel horizontal kernel and also I will create the Sobel vertical kernel. It's same with the Sobel horizontal but different values for each uh, array minus one zero one minus two zero two minus one zero and one. So this one is kernel for detecting the horizontal lines and this one and the kernel for detecting the vertical lines of this image. So you need to create it manually. So you need to uh, make sure that your code is right because you need to yeah see the numpy array for the sobel vertical and sobel horizontal. Then after the after this I will print the sobel horizontal and sobel vertical. So as you can see, this is the kernel for the Sobel horizontal, and this is the kernel for the Sobel vertical. Okay. Okay. You need to uh, type this code first. Then after this one, we will uh, convolve this kernel into this image, right? Okay. Using the SkyPy library. So uh, we we will talk it uh, in a minute after this.
ini kok ada yang itu apa namanya request akses ya harus pakai itu ya emailnya ubaya ya buat download image-nya you need to use your university uh, google account for accessing this image so yeah you need to make sure that you are login in your university account Ini itu ya hati-hati nanti codingnya kurung sikunya jangan sampai salah kurung sikunya ada dua di sini karena kita pakai nampai ya kita pakai nampai nampai itu kayak array ya library untuk memproses sebuah array tapi kita nggak akan bahas itu lebih jauh yang penting kalian gunakan saja ini jadi intinya adalah kita akan membuat dua array yang kita gunakan sebagai kernel yaitu kernel Sobel sama Laplacian Yang Sobel sendiri itu terdiri dari dua kernel Yaitu Sobel horizontal sama Sobel vertikal Yang nilainya itu berbeda Antara yang horizontal sama yang vertikal Nanti kedua kernel ini Akan kita konvolusikan dengan Ini Kita akan konvolusikan dengan Image yang ini Nanti akan muncul kita bisa detek Garis horizontalnya saja Ataupun garis vertikalnya saja Kalau kita pakai Sobel ya Sobel Kernel, nanti kalau Laplacian kernel, kita bisa langsung detek dua-duanya sekaligus, seperti itu. Oke, okay, have you finish? Sudah selesai? Finish. Finish. Oke. Okay. Oke. Okay. Oke, okay, if you have finished, we will move on to the next code. So, yeah. This one is for convolve, yeah. For convolve this kernel with this image, right? So, we, we will use the... Uh, this code out underscore h equal nd image nd image the convolve gray gray is the is the image of our image this one because I set this one as a gray value then we need to add the sobel horizontal for the kernel and the model 
equal reflex so we don't need to uh, discuss about the motor is because I use the default mode for this uh, convolutions then for the out V for the vertical vertical we also use the convolution but we, we will change the kernel for this uh, convolution we, we will use the sobel vertical and motor equal reflex and after that we will showing this image by using this code okay as you can see right here if we uh, if we showing the out underscore edge it means the image after the convolution by using the sobel horizontal so we'll see that we will get only the horizontal lines right like this one okay okay you need to implement this code first and after this on the next code we will showing the out underscore v for detecting the vertical lines of this image because the horizontal using the sobel horizontal uh, kernel and for the vertical uh, it is using the sobel vertical kernel right okay so actually the sobel operator or sobel kernel is very useful for detecting the horizontal lines or the vertical lines okay you can implement this code and if you have any question you can ask to me if you find any error in your code you can also ask to me Oke, okay, finish. Sudah atau belum? Finish. Finish. Any problem, Larry? No? Oke. Okay. Sudah. Sudah semua. Oke, okay, let's move on to the next slide. Ya, yeah, I'm sorry, to the next code. Uh, for the next code, you just uh, change the I am show out V because we want to uh, displaying the image only in the vertical lines. So yeah, you can just uh, use this one. Out fee, right? I think I can uh, skip this one because it just changes the values of the IM so. And the next one is uh, for the kernel Laplace, right? Uh, Laplacean kernel is uh, useful for detecting not only the horizontal image. I'm sorry, not only the horizontal lines, but also 
the vertical lines. So uh, it's same with the Sobel operator, but we just need to change the value of the matrix, right, for the kernel. So the kernel is 1, 1, 1, 1 minus 8, 1, 1, 1, 1. Then after that, uh, same with our previous code, we just only change the value, the kernel replace, inside the convolve uh, method, right? Then after that, we uh, print and this, uh, we, we're showing the image, as you can see right here, you will see that the horizontal lines and also the vertical lines is detected, right? Okay, so yeah, it's the differences between the Sobel operator and the Laplacian operator. Or we can say that Sobel kernel and Laplacian kernel, right? Okay, you need to uh, create another non by array for the Laplacian kernel. Then you need to convolve again to our previous image, the gray image. Then after that, we showing the, the image by using the IMSO method, like this one. Okay. You have any? Do you have any class after this? No. Fourteen, fifteen. Is there anyone have a class after this? No. No sir. No. No. Okay, so okay, if you have if you don't have any class, you can we can continue in our last topic of this image segmentations. We will use a one algorithm for a segment the image. So yeah, this is the basic algorithm for for segmentation. So yeah, I will explain you later after this. Okay, finish. Finish, sir. Okay. Finish. Okay. If we have finished, we will move on to the next code. But actually, before we uh, discuss about this code, uh, we will um, move back to the to the uh, slide. Image segmentation based on clustering, and actually, for the segment the image, we can also use the clustering algorithm, like I means clustering. So we will uh, use a very basic uh, clustering algorithm, which is the K means K means clustering. Yeah, the the this idea might have come to you while reading about image segmentations. Can we use clustering techniques? to divide images into segments yeah we, we certainly can in this section we'll we will get an intuition of what clustering is it's always good to revise certain concepts and how we can use of its segment images right 
So clustering is the task of dividing the population's data points into a number of groups such that data points in the same groups are more similar to other data points in that same group than these in other groups. These groups are known as clusters. So actually image segmentations, we, we can also use the uh, clustering algorithm because you know image segmentation is for cluster uh, some pixels into one object right because we want to detecting an object into the image so actually we can use the clustering algorithm for uh, doing that so before we talk about the k-means clustering actually you have learned about the k-means clustering right k-means clustering you know k-means clustering if you take a, a data mining course you must uh, learn about the k-means clustering right it's very a uh, very simple uh, algorithm for clustering uh, for clustering the data right so anyone have learned about the k-means clustering actually this is not the the it's not the uh, topic on the digital image processing because in the data mining you have learned about the k-means clustering right have you learned about the k-means clustering or maybe in another course uh, like information retrieval maybe I don't know you have learned about the k-means clustering because in data mining. yeah in data mining you have learned about it all right yes yeah, sudah dipelajari sudah ya jadi nggak perlu saya jelaskan lagi kan ya k-means clustering itu kayak gini kan ya kita tentukan nanti senternya di mana ya kan terus dari center itu nanti senternya bisa berubah-ubah tergantung dari berapa kali perulangan yang kita lakukan setelah itu setelah klasternya terbentuk ini means minusnya uh, data poinnya data tengahnya ini itu merupakan rata-ratanya jadi nanti kayak means clustering itu berjalan sesuai dengan uh, loopingnya berapa ya dia tergantung semakin lama loopingnya itu semakin bagus hasil klasternya tapi tergantung juga karena kayak means clustering ini masih menggunakan uh, sesuatu yang random seperti data poin tengahnya ini kita setting random kan biasanya bisa saja kita kalau salah meletakkan uh, data poin tengahnya ini nah, itu nanti uh, dia bisa stuck di suatu posisi nah, ya yeah. k-means clustering is, is a very basic uh, algorithm for clustering data but we can use it for the image, image segmentation right okay how to do that you can see uh, into the into the code actually we will use you uh, don't worry you, you will not uh, code, code from scratch we will use the scikit image we will use the scikit image library for doing the k-means clustering okay uh, first of all you need to yeah you need to uh, uh, read the image the previous image one the gpe g you can uh, use this code again yeah it's similar with our previous code but uh, we, we need to dividing by 255 to bring the pixel values between 0 and 1. So we call it as a normalization because the pixel values is between 0 until 255, right? But for the k-means clustering, we need to uh, change the values from 0 to 255 to 1, uh, between 1 to, eh, between uh, 0 to 1 by using uh, this code dividing by 255 right because uh, our image is 8 bits so we need just uh, dividing to 255 then after that uh, you can just showing your image so actually when we use the k-means clustering we can work on the color image right not only in the grayscale image because k-means clustering uh, can uh, cluster the image with a high dimensional data right not only one dimensional but also uh, two three and five it's etc we can uh, the k-means clustering we can uh, the k-means clustering can handle more than one dimensional uh, data so we can just use uh, color image for the image segmentations okay you need to uh, code this uh, you need to type this code first then you need to run it then after that you will see the color image in your screen like this one uh, it's a three-dimensional image of shape uh, 192 
and three for clustering the image using the k-means we first need to convert it into a two-dimensional array whose shape will be length width and channels in our example this will be one uh, 192,263 so we will change this dimension into a two-dimensional right so like our previous code but this at this uh, k-means clustering we will I uh, use we will reshaping into this uh, this uh, dimension right to 192 uh, times 263 into a three channel right so for the k-means clustering it's uh, for easy to us and to our uh, algorithm we need to reshaping our image into two dimensional right okay like this one you need to code you need to type this code and this code Right. This is for uh, transforming, for reshaping our image into two-dimensional array. And this one is for just uh, reading the image in a tree uh, color or RGB color. Or color image, you can say, yeah, color image or RGB color image. It's Yeah, it's up to you. Okay, like this one. You need to uh, type this code first. Then we will uh, move into the next code. Okay, if you have any question, you can ask to me. So yeah, we will use the k-means clustering for image segmentations in the color image. Finish? Sudah? Finish, sir. Okay. Uh, sir, can I ask something? Yeah. But uh, for the three-dimensional, mm -hmm. the... the 192, 263, and mm -hmm. 3, mm -hmm. the 3 means again, I kind of forgot. I'm sorry, I, I can hear your voice. I cannot hear your uh, your voice clearly. Can you repeat your question? Mm -hmm. uh, so, in the three-dimensional, there is 192, mm -hmm. 263, two, and uh -huh. then 3. Yeah, right. So, the 192 is the height, and 263 right. is the... Yes. With. Yes. I don't really understand that. What is the three for? Okay. So I will explain you uh, by using the the pen like this one. Okay. Actually, uh, when we have a color image, right? So, for example, I will uh, draw a uh, three, a uh, three times three images, like this one. So, when we talk about the color image, every pixels has 
uh, how many pixels, how many values? Three, right? Yes, sir. Because uh, we, and we are talking about the uh, color image, color image. Every pixel has the red, green, and blue uh, pixel values, right? Like this one. This is the values for the green, and this is the values for the uh, blue pixel. So actually, when we are uh, read the color image, it has, uh, for example, 192, 263, and 3, right? 192 is the height, height of the image, height. And 263 is for the width, and 3 is for the channel, right? So every pixel, for example, uh, I will give the this one to 103, uh, 101, uh, 012, and 012. For example, uh, the pixel in the 0, 0, 0 and 0 coordinate will have a three channel right for the red value green value and blue value right so so what uh what are you asking larry do you don't understand about what so how how um, why we should uh multiplying this one how, how should we multiplying this 192 and 263 is that your question Oh, so we multiply it so it becomes only the only one line like that. Right, like that. only one line, but yeah, it's still three three dimensional, right? So after we converting uh, this and uh, this this uh, this array into into this one, I'm sorry, one one hundred one nine two two six three into three, so we will have like this one. Right, uh, we will have a uh, red, green, and blue into a uh, line, into a one-dimensional array, right? Like this one. So we will uh, change this one into this one. So the Kamen's algorithm will uh, will more easy to work with the uh, array like this one. So actually, we just uh, converting every. Uh, pixel values for the red, green, and blue into this one. So if we uh, change this uh, array into this one, so the, the 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 shape of the array will be like this. We have a tree array, right? And every every value of this red, green, and blue, it has a value. It has a value, and it has a value, right? So it's it's same if you use the grayscale image, right? If we have a grayscale image, the the values will be. For example, if we change the color image into the grayscale image, we will have uh, only one, only one uh, pixel values, right? Only one channel, right? So, if we have a a grayscale image it will be like this the shape of the image will be like this one nine one nine two two six three but it only has one channel right so if we uh, uh, change the if we change the the shape of this image to one hand one nine two two six three right it will only has one dimensional array right like this one actually uh, I'm sorry maybe I cannot say that this is one dimensional array it's it's only it's still a three dimensional array but only the shape is different with the previous uh, shape of our image right so like this one maybe Larry you, you still don't understand about it uh, I, I understand no sir okay, Thank okay. You. yeah actually we just we just not I'm sorry. Uh, we will not the we will not change the dimensional array, but only the shape of that array, right? So the first one we have a shape like this, 
192 and 263 and we will convert the array into this shape 192263 and we have a tree we still have a three dimensional array right but uh, with the different shape right so yeah it's work on the color image if we work in the color grayscale image the the shape of the image will be like this okay yeah thank you for your question okay. so any any other questions from yeah from you from another uh, maybe you you still don't understand about the code you can ask to me okay finish if you have finished we will move on into the next code so actually this code is just for calling the k-means clustering algorithm so we will use the scikit image i'm sorry not not scikit image but scikit learn uh, yeah it's different with scikit image we will use the scikit learn sk learn is mean it means the scikit learn library we will call the scikit learn dot cluster import k-means and k-means equal k-means number of cluster you know when we want to uh, use the k-means clustering we need to define the number of cluster that we want to uh, divide then we yeah the random set equals zero i use the default value from the documentations of the k-means clustering in the scikits learn that fit pick underscore n pick underscore n is the image that we have uh, transforming into the, the the shape right then after that uh pick to show equal k means cluster centers k means labels yeah just type this code uh, then after that cluster pick equal pick to show the receipt pick shape zero pick shape one and pick shape three so we will uh transforming back the the uh, the shape of our image so we can use it for showing into the im so method so like this one so we have uh, image which uh, consists of five different pixel right five uh, five region i'm sorry five region because we use the number of cluster as a five so as you can see right here we will see that there are five types of pixel five types regions so it depends on the number of cluster if we just change the cluster into two i'm sorry I will uh, run the code from the beginning because my runtime is disabled. Uh, run all. Yeah. Uh, you you can maybe you can just uh, typing the code first. Uh, this one. Okay, uh, you need to type this code. Yeah, this is for using the k-means clustering algorithm for clustering the image. So as you can see right here, if we just using a two uh, number of cluster, we can only see that there are two only two region, right? Uh, green and maybe I don't know what the the color of this. Maybe a gray. We only have a two. Uh, region right zero and gray so yeah it it depends on the number of cluster that you give for the k-means clustering algorithm okay you need to type this code so maybe you can uh, you can also use another algorithm for the clustering i don't know maybe it can work for the digital image processing for the image segmentations if you are uh, really interested for yeah, trying another algorithm, yeah, it's you can uh, use it. You can use another algorithm for the clustering. And I will I I, key, I use the k-means clustering because it's very simple. It's very basic for the clustering algorithm so you can use it 
on image segmentation. Oke okay, sudah ya, kalau sudah, ya yeah, this is the end of our course, so don't worry, I will upload this uh, this course, I will upload this, our, our, our course today, I will upload it on YouTube, so if you still don't understand about the, my explanations, you can play the video on YouTube after this. Ya. Yeah. Zen, kenapa hasilnya beda? Bedanya kenapa? Oh, sudah. Ya, wis. Oke. Okay. Oke, okay, ada problem yang lain? Aman. Oke. Okay. Sip, kalau gitu. Oke, okay, nanti untuk proyeknya akan saya publish besok Rabu, ya. I will... Uh, Publish the project on, on Wednesday. Jadi jangan khawatir, projectnya nggak sulit ya, gampang. Karena kenapa kok gampang? Karena sebenarnya projectnya itu di awal saya saya pengennya dikerjakan secara berkelompok. Tapi ternyata kok dengan kondisi kita saat ini itu kalau dikerjakan berkelompok nggak mungkin. Jadi nanti level projectnya akan saya turunkan. Saya buat jadi individu saja, tapi lebih mudah nanti projectnya. Ya, seperti apa proyeknya nanti tunggu saja di Rabu akan saya publish. Kalian pokoknya pelajari saja semua materi mulai dari week 1 sampai week ini. Kita kurang satu itu ya, kurang satu materi yaitu tentang apa namanya? Uh, image description. Ya, image description itu lanjutan dari image segmentation, tapi nanti akan saya jelaskan hari Rabu besok. Nah, setelah itu untuk classification sebenarnya image classification itu Uh, image classification itu ya masuk materi PCD juga jadi kita mengklasifikasikan apa namanya image itu pakai algoritma yang sederhana saja sebenarnya kalau kita pakai algoritma yang yang kompleks kayak deep learning ya bisa-bisa saja tapi kalau deep learning ya kita harus belajar yang namanya neural network ya nah, belajar neural network itu ya butuh waktu yang lama juga nggak mungkin saya jelaskan dalam ya sekitar dua minggu ini itu kurang nanti Nanti kita gunakan image classification pakai algoritma yang klasifikasi yang simple-simple saja. Tapi nanti kalau misalnya memang ada waktu, nanti akan saya coba jelaskan tentang yang itu ya pakai deep learning. Itu nanti saya coba, ya mungkin nanti saya bikin materinya yang dengan bahasa yang simple seperti itu. Okay, Larry, you have a problem with the yeah this one. Uh, change the three dimensional into two dimensional. This one, Larry, yes or no?
Okay. Any questions? Okay, if you don't, if you don't have any questions, uh, I will end this class. So don't worry, I will upload the video on YouTube so you can play it back if you have any uh, any. If you still don't understand about my explanation, you can yeah just play it back on YouTube. Yeah, any question? No. Not sure. No. Okay. Yeah, Ada. Okay. Thank you for your attention. I will end this class. We will meet again on a Wednesday. We will use the Google Meet. I'm sorry because I don't know Google Hangout. Uh, I forgot Google Hangout only accept ten people at the same time. Yeah, Larry, will the Python file be uploaded also soon? Yes, I will upload the I will upload the uh, Python code after this on ULS because I have a problem. I cannot uh, I cannot access the ULS. So after this, I will upload it. Okay, any question? Okay, if you don't have any questions, I will end this class. Yeah, thank you. Terima kasih. Good afternoon. Yes, sir. Thank you. Terima kasih, Pak. Terima kasih, Pak.